So this is the tutorial on deep learning um, for computer vision. So deep learning has been a big disruption in computer vision and machine learning and artificial intelligence. So it has been called the artificial intelligence revolution. So this is a famous quote from a Stanford professor. AI is a new electricity, like electricity changed our whole civilization with a big impact uh, compared to what we used to have without electricity. So also in the popular media, you will hear lots of uh, these uh, news items like AlphaGo beats uh, KG again to wrap up the three-part match. Uh, Google's automated AI tool surpasses human experts. Machine beat humans for a growing number of tasks. AI is the next revolution in customer service. AI revolution and selfishness uh, from must brace for AI revolution. Um, and um, the what is predicted the most impact of deep learning will be on self-driving cars. And um, these are the some news items recently in the news media about the self-driving cars. Uh, Ford intends to launch self-driving cars service by 2021. Will self-driving cars end the big automakers? Every big firm in China is becoming self-driving car company. How safe should we expect self-driving cars to be? And Intel acquired self-driving car platform a company Mobileye, which was um, founded by a computer vision professor in Israel by for $15 billion. Now also at the same time there's concerns the way the things are going and going so fast. Uh, this is a quote from a researcher in Google who says machine learning has become like alchemy, which means there's not much re, you know, science, it's just a lot of uh, intuitive ideas people are trying to solve the problems. So <laughs> in this um, tutorial I'm going to cover two things. One is I'm going to talk about <clears throat> the basic concepts in deep learning, essentially give you a short overview. And part two, I'm going to talk about recent work we have done using deep learning solving computer vision problem. So <clears throat> this um, tutorial is actually prepared by my postdoc, uh, Yogesh, who did this for my class last semester, and the slides are available at this link. So <clears throat> what we will cover in this, uh, we'll cover what is called convolutional neural network and their widespread use in deep learning. Uh, we will in particular look at the case studies of LXNet and network training and also recurrent neural networks um, which work with the sequential data. So <clears throat> conventional ne neural network or CNN uh, is a class of neural networks um, which take image as input and will make, make prediction about the input image. So let's say we have an image like this and um, these are the different uh, layers of the CNN and this is a convolutional layers and these are fully connected layer and the output comes out like this and these are the prediction, the objects which may be present in this image. Okay, so it can be bird or it can be some other objects like um, sunset, dog, and so on. So um, now neural networks are not new. Uh, we've been talking about for a long time. The recent history in 90s, there was a neural network um, called LENET, which uh, was able to recognize these characters that and uh, this also has these different layers as is shown here um, and um, was performing subsampling. These are the convolutional layers and these are fully connected layers. <coughs> but the, the strong results came in 2012 um, by LXNet <coughs> which is shown here and on the problem of ImageNet. So ImageNet is a problem where there are thousand different categories and um, this has been going on for many years and 2012 was the first time that the error rate was decreased significantly. The previous error rate was 26 percent 
and they reduce almost half to 15 percent and error rate means that you know how many errors you are going to make given a testing image to classify into the correct classes and there are thousand classes <clears throat> so now CNNs are everywhere it is a big disruption this has really changed the direction of research for example classification you can take these images and you can get um, the probability that this image belongs to this particular class and this image belongs to this other class and you can put these labels so these are called classification the also CNNs can be used for object detection so you can put a bounding box and also recognize what that object is which is more <coughs> more <coughs> more useful as compared just saying the label of image that what this image contains also you can do the segmentation it's called semantic segmentation assign each pixel label that this pixel belong to the house or the and cow or bicycle and so on and um, that is much more finer segment segmentation and detection is compared to object detection where you are putting the bounding box um, CNNs can also be used for image captioning like you can have an image and come up with what the image describes as a sentence and CNN can be used for style transfer like you can take uh, this image <coughs> and uh, convert it like a painting uh, by a famous French uh, artist that will look like that so CNN not only used for images but can be used for the language text that's called natural language processing uh, suppose you can take a document and classify text and uh, the interesting thing which is used in CNN is to word to vector so you take each word and map it to one vector and then it becomes like an um, like an image a row from an image and you can do the similar operation as you are doing with images suppose this is one simple encoding of these different words so in this case you know you will have this code for love this code for NLP and so on and then you can manipulate these vectors and to do the conversion um, also it is impacted audio so you can you know apply the speech recognition and uh, again the audio is one dimensional signal so but you can look at the frequency information audio and come up with what is called a spectrogram and which looks like the image and then treat the image like you are treating image in the CNN um, so the main point here is that you are converting data to a matrix, a 2D matrix and um, um, 1D convolution you can apply in audio, EEG, some other modalities and then you can extend it to 3D when you have video. So video has several frames and you have the uh, sequence of frames and these frames are taken in different time interval so third dimension is from the time so x y two dimensions image and third dimension from the time and you can just extend to the 3d convolution so um, neural network um, was why CNN so neural network is um, fully connected layer so simplest idea is that while well, you have input so well, you have three inputs and this these are the neurons and these are this is called input layer then you have hidden layer which is also three neurons and then you have output layer which has two neurons <coughs> so these neurons are also called units there are three units here three units here and so on <coughs> so it uh, takes the input and uh, each of the neuron hidden layer is connected to all other neurons in the previous layer this also is connected to all other neurons in the previous layer so that's why it's called fully connected layer okay so um, 
now image is input in neural network then the size of image when you convert in the vector will be very large for example if you have 256 by 256 image <coughs> which is a very small size then you have about 196,000 dimension vector of image and uh, then you will have lots of these fully connected connection so therefore instead of fully connected most of the layers for the images are the convolutional neural network remember we talk about how we do convolution when you apply a mask or the kernel to find the derivatives or apply a Gaussian filter so this is same convolution operator here so we will take an image and which will have three channels red green blue and come up with the feature maps um, and um, in this case we will have these feature maps width and height and we'll have many copies of that and that will become a depth so so the CNN operates on the volume of data so it is the 3d uh, tensor or 3d data so we have x y in image and the time uh, that third dimension is number of channels okay number of feature maps so then what happens that for each of the feature map the same kernel is applied to all the pixels and that way we are sharing the weights and that's why we don't need the fully connected in the initial layer otherwise we'll have lots of weights okay so now convolution is a very important concept um, and that's a core building block of CNN um, so it kind of preserves the spatial structure of image and uh, let's go again you know to understand the convolution even though I covered earlier so let's say we have 32 by 32 image and we have a color image we have a RGB so yeah that's why we have three channels here okay so what we are going to do that um, we will have a filter or kernel mass 3 by 3 but we'll have three of those we will apply this 3 by 3 by 3 filter to this uh, 3 by 3 32 by 32 uh, RGB image and um, so applying of this filter means that we are going to convolve the image as we did before when we are finding derivative of image so suppose we are going to fit here we will multiply the corresponding elements to where it fits in and uh, sum it up and we'll get one value and then we will put that value in uh, this and uh, so one is now the resolution of this will reduce to 30 by 30 because we have 3 by 3 so we are going to miss the border points and uh, this uh, way we'll get 30 by 30 instead of from 32 by 32 um, so like that we can apply another filter which is uh, shown in green we'll get another feature map and this way we are going to generate many many feature maps but for each feature map we need to compute these weights which are 3 by 3 by 3 which is 27 weights and these weights will be for the whole image so that's the advantage of using convolution network because we are applying the same filter to everywhere as compared to fully connected where we are applying different weights to each of the pixels so so that way we will let's say we apply six filters and uh, we will get six activation maps or six output from this three channel RGB image okay and um, the we can then take this one let's say instead of applying three by three filter we can apply five by five by three um, bigger filter then we will reduce the resolution 
to 28 because we are going to miss the more border point because the filter is bigger. So again, we can apply six filters and we'll get a six channels of 28 by 28. Okay, and um, then on the top of it, then we can have another layer, and let's say we apply <clears throat> five by five filter to these six channels, then from 28 by 28, we will reduce to 24 by 24 um, because the, uh, the filter size is five by five. And uh, from there, we can generate, say, 16 uh, feature maps again. So for that, we will need the 16 filters. Each filter will be of this size. Again, this is a 3D uh, filter, 5x5 five five image, and six feature map previously. So that is what we are going to do in the convolution neural network. Okay, Every step, we are applying convolution filter, and uh, we go to the next layer. We will apply more filters and so on. And the idea is that we are going to learn these weights, what this filter should be. As compared to as we did before, where we knew we are finding the derivatives and derivatives filter we found using the finite difference definition of derivative. Or we say we are going to apply the box filter. Or we say we are going to apply the Gaussian filter. So we know those filter weights. Or we know the kernels. So the main thing what we are going to learn in the neural network is what those filters should be. And that's called learning process. And there will be many, many filters. Okay, so so the, let's understand a little bit more what is the convolution operation. So we have function, so it's 1D function like this, and we have a kernel like this. Then we apply, we slide through this as we did before, and we get this convolution of this like that. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, as this uh, kernel goes through this input when it is similar then will have high value when it is not similar will have low value so it's finding in a way the correlation of this so mathematically convolution operation can be represented like this so it's like an integration so we take a f of t and we flip the g and then do the integration for minus infinity now one thing is that if the kernel is uh, symmetric as it is here, symmetric around the x-axis. So this doesn't mean if you flip it, it'll be again the same. And most of the filters we use in Gaussian filters and so on are the derivative filter, they were symmetric. So therefore, convolution and the correlation, they are the same thing. So the when we do the um, filter, uh, filming, then becomes convolution. And when we do, don't do the filping, then it's a correlation. But if the filter is symmetric, then convolution and the correlation, they are the same. So keep in mind, convolution, we have to do flipping. And correlation, we don't have to do flipping. But if the kernel is symmetric, then convolution and correlation are the same. Very simple. Okay? So... Um, so again, one more example of the uh, convolution. So this is an image, and we want to apply three by three filter, which is like let's say this weight. <coughs> then we will multiply pixel by pixel here, get output here. Then we shift. Again, we get three, and so on. So that is the convolution operation, which is a basic building block of the deep learning CNN. Next thing, which is important, what is called pooling. So this pooling is introducing translation invariance. Uh, <clears throat> so these uh, will make it representation smaller. So let's say we have this image, which is uh, four by four. And we want to we'll reduce that four by four to two by two, and we'll take each two by two and come up with the maximum value and put it here. 
Suppose in this one maximum value is 6, we'll put it here. In this one maximum value is 8, we'll put it here. In this one 3, and this one 4. <coughs> so this um, is called pooling and it will operate on, after we apply the kernel, it will operate on that. And um, so if we have this feature map, which is, um, let's say, <coughs> 64 of these feature maps, say 1, 2, 3, and 64, and the size of each feature map is 224 by 224. So then when they do, when, when we do pooling on it, the resolution of this feature map reduced by half. So 224 will reduce to 112 by 112, but the feature map's number will remain the same. There are 64 of those. <coughs> so that's why we'll take the, say, 224 by 24, which is reduce the resolution using this operation, we'll get 112.12. And we'll do this for every feature map. Okay, that's called pooling. And in this case, it's called max pooling, because what we are doing, taking these four values, taking the maximum one and putting it here. Taking four views, putting the maximum one here. So um, now next thing we are going to do what's called activation function. So that introduces nonlinearity. And uh, so the idea is, let's say we have the input. We apply these weights and we get the output here. Now to this output we are going to apply the activation function <coughs> and the simplest one is called rectify linear unit. So what we are going to do, we'll look at the value, if it is positive then we'll just replace that value. If it is negative we'll replace by zero. So this is the rectification function. So for negative, I'll be zero. For positive, it'll be same, like x. So this is another activation function, which will take the x and find a tangent, tangent hyperbolic, and it will look like that. It will modify uh, <coughs> the active in the whatever output we get after the convolution. And this is another function, which is called sigmoid function. Uh, we will take the x and do the exponential of that with negative sign at one and find the one upon that and that will um, be another way to do activation. So all these three are doing some kind of nonlinearity in in this um, as compared to when you do the convolution, it's a linear operation. You're just multiplying and adding up. So that's important thing. So, um, so now let's look at an example here that we have an input image, we are applying this filter and we are getting these different feature maps. So look at the green one gives us this, then look at the red one gives us that, and then you look at the another one, look at this. So <coughs> these are kind of finding different kind of edges or different kind of thing and uh, that is what these convolution are actually doing. Okay, so so if you look at an Im input image as core, so these different uh, layers in the convolutional neural network are computing different features, low level features from mid level, high level, and some kind of classifier. So for this one, these will be the features we'll obtain, which will kind of oriented edges and so on. Here, maybe we'll have more idea of say parts, parts of the object and so on. And here may have more information about the objects themselves and so on. So that is what in each layer is happening here. So the given uh, in page like this, we apply the convolution layer we get these lot of feature maps. Then we do the activation function, ReLU, make them all positive. And then 
on that we apply the convolution in the layer then we apply ReLU make them all positive then do the pooling which means that reduces the resolution then apply another convolution then ReLU, convolution, ReLU, pooling this is the way these different layers works and we keep adding the layers and at the end we come up with the classification this is a fully connected network so let's say in this one we have these possible category you can happen you know house ship airplane truck and car and this when you input a car then it should give us a very high value compared to other one and uh, that's what we are after so now LXNet was one big success and it looked like that so we have an image and then different convolution as you see here that we are doing 5 by 5 convolution then come up with um, 96 feature maps then apply get 256 map feature map again we are doing the pooling so 55 by 55 reduces 27 by 27 then apply convolution 3 by 3 and generate these many maps 384 maps and resolution reduce 13 by 13 then apply another 3 by 3 convolution but here we are not uh, doing the pooling so <clears throat> we take this apply another one 3 by 3 then get 13 by 13 250 mapping and uh, then we have dense layers and at the end we come up with 1000 dimensional vector because imagine it has 1000 classes okay so input is um, the size and the RGB three channels and uh, we have five convolutional layers as you see one two three four five and three dense layers as you see three here and output is 1000 dimensional vector <coughs> so and we can list those you know convolutional one max pooling then we normalize and then convolutional two max pooling normalize then convolutional three four five max pooling fully connected six seven eight so these are the layers of this convolutional neural network okay so now <clears throat> it's important to understand that you know where we start these dimensions important will really help you to fully understand what's happening so again we have RGB image with three channels red, green, blue and size of input image is 227 by 227 then we convolve with first layer and um, filters are 11 by 11 and we get 96 of the channels so and then we do the stride that like we shift um, to and from 227 2 to 7 is goes to the 55 by 55 so we reduce by 4 then we do the max pooling and uh, filters about 3 by 3 stride 2 and we get 96 channels we do convolution 2 get 256 channel then again do max pooling 13 by 13 so these are all these different channels and um, then we have fully connected so here we have 4096 dimension neurons these many neurons and another layer are fully connected same neurons the last layer we have thousand neurons because we have thousand classes so now you can calculate that how many parameters we need for each of the layer okay well this is 35,000 parameters because what we are doing here is uh, we have 11 by 11 which is 121 and multiply by 96 okay and this we are doing for the three channels if you can calculate you will get something like that similarly for this one 307k and 800k and so on this is 1.3 million because we are increasing number of channels here so but one thing you will notice that the convolutional layers the parameters are not that high compared to fully connected layer because here the 37 million parameters because 
we have 4096 neurons for each of the neuron we are connecting the 6 by 6 which is 36 and there are 256 of those so that's why these fully connected layers we avoid because there's so many parameters okay and the convolution uh, layer has fewer parameters because we are applying same filter to everywhere in the image so that's the main advantage of that so um, now given this background so we want to look at how we can train the network so that these parameters we can learn and that's called learning okay because we don't know what these parameters should be because we, we are not just finding derivative we are removing wise we actually want to classify this image to different categories and we have training examples and we want to apply these filters such that we can improve our performance okay so again if you look at this uh, example we have said these classes and we have examples for that we have this and we know it's a bird suppose the output here will be four dimensional vector okay so ideally when we have this image we want to get um, uh, one um, <clears throat> for this one one zero 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 so as a four dimensional vector we're going to get one zero 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 because there's a bird okay if there's an image you know like um, sunset we'll get zero one zero zero so now what we will have <coughs> is training examples we'll have lots of birds example we'll have lots of a uh, sunset example now those four categories and human has said this is a bird this is sunset and so on so we'll input that bird we will apply these convolutional to these image and go through different layers and so on and initially we will randomly initialize these weights as you as we go through that we are we want to find these kernel weights but we don't know what weight should be so we'll initialize randomly then we will modify those weights depending on given an image we get a prediction using those random weights we'll get a vector that four dimensional vector we are going to compare that four dimensional vector the ground truth because we know that this vector this corresponds to this one vector should be one zero zero one one zero zero three you know one followed by three zero but the this since the weights are random so this may give us any garbage so we want to find the difference between the prediction from the network and the ground truth and we want to minimize their difference and we want to find these weights such that their difference is minimized and that's the way we are going to learn these weights okay so that's the main important thing so <clears throat> so that the difference or error is called loss function so that's important in deep network that what is the loss function which you want to minimize so so in terms of prediction um, we want to do the optimization um, so that we can find these um, <coughs> these uh, kernel weights and minimize the loss and this loss is shown here so so let's say we have input x i first example i is equal one that's a bird image and we apply these neural network goes through different weights w okay um, these are network parameters and we get output from the neural network which is uh, this one and um, then this is the ground truth we want to compare the output from the neural network with the ground truth and the loss function will depend on these two things the difference or some other version of that and this one is for one example i is equal to one but we will have i is equal to two i is equal to three we'll have lots of examples we want to minimize the sum of these losses we want to find this these parameters okay so this is our ground truth because someone has annotated so um, 
Now what should be the loss functions? Okay, so one loss function is the entropy, which is called cross entropy. So we want to say that um, the um, when we have the the probability of the correct correct class, say it's y i, and uh, log of that we will look at the um, this is the ground truth and it's a prediction one. So we look at the entropy, which is the uh, disturbance in the in that distribution. So this is uh, that it is the correct label. This is the probability of this uncorrect label, one minus y i. So we are going to look at the there are two. It's a binary. Let's say it's a binary um, uh, thing where we are going to look at the correct probability and incorrect probability and we find the entropy of that and we are going to do that for all examples the training examples so because we have many examples we cannot do just one and we will sum up this cross entropy for all the examples and divide by number of examples so it will be average and that is the this one is a ground truth and this one is a predicted the y hat as I told you so this is kind of coming up from what is called KL divergence. So you have two probability distribution. If you want to find the difference between them, how similar they are, so you find the KL divergence, and which is you take the, uh, there are two probabilities, probability P and probability Q. So it's probability P is from the ground truth, and probability Q is from the prediction of the network. So we'll take the different um, bins of the probability, say ith bin, find the probability of pi, and then we'll find the log of pi divided by qi, and uh, that will give us the difference from p to q, and then this cross entropy is a simplified form of that. So that is, we are going to say in, in brief, that we want to come up with this prediction such that the probability distribution of this prediction is very similar to probability distribution of the ground truth. Or the difference these two probability distribution negative of the difference between due to distribution to minimize. That's our loss function. So that is um, the commonly used loss function which we'll use. Okay? So now beside this, um, the convolutional neural network, there's another form of neural network called recurrent neural network. So right now, so far we have talked about just one image. So there's no sequence of images. Say let's say we want to process sequence of images like a video. So we have to introduce that recurrent time. So recurrent neural network will have a feedback from the time steps. So it looks like that. It will have the input x and say output h and this output will be feedback to the network. So the network will have two things, one from the input, other from what it was outputting last time. So if you roll this over time, so first time x0, it will have input like this, will have this, it's called hidden output. Then next time our input will be x1, and then it will have this h coming here. Then next time will be x2, <coughs> and so on, x3, x4, and xd. So that is the recurrent thing, and the difference is that we feedback whatever the, it's outputting we will feed back to that and with the input and the feedback it's going to generate something. So it will have different um, um, versions. So simplest one, the standard vanilla network is that we have one input, one output like we discussed the classifier. CNN will have one input, output will be prediction of the class. But the the recurrent neural network will have one input, it can have many outputs. So it will be one to many. It can have uh, <coughs> many input 
and can have one output. So in this case, um, we can put a sequence of words and then it'll give you what sentiment it is. So sequence of words, many inputs, but out will be one, one sentiment like happy or upset or something. In the previous one, we can have one input as an image, it'll generate a sequence of words, will be a caption of an image, okay? And in this case, we can have sequence of words as input and sequence of word output. So it's many to many, like you can put the English and output will be French and so on. So that is the recurrent neural network which is useful for processing the sequences. And um, another many to many is that, you know, we have um, video, video sequence and output can be localization of the actor where the action is happening. So in summary, we talk about convolution neural network. That important operation is convolution. Then <coughs> pooling, which uh, give us the translation invariance, reduces the resolution. And then ReLU, which is the introduce non-linearity, um, which is called rectify linear unit. The simplest one, um, this activation function ReLU, so which uh, take the, whatever the, the previous layer gives us, it will, if it is positive, it will just duplicate the positive. If it is negative, make it zero. So all the elements will become positive. And uh, then we talk about the LXNet, or so many layers, the conventional layers and fully connected layers. <coughs> and we talk about how we do the training. So training is basically done to find the uh, weights or parameters of these network, which are the kernel weights. And in that is important, how do we find the weights? So we minimize some loss function that we have ground truth available and the network predicts something, we want to minimize the difference between them, or we want to minimize the distribution differences, and so on. And then we talk about the recurrent neural network, which uh, deals with the sequences. And uh, it has different forms. Input can be one image, output can be words, input can be English language, output can be uh, French. The main difference there is that we have the output being fed back to the input. So it has two things, the output from the previous step and the in current input, it's combined. So there are many different deep learning packages. Uh, as uh, Kishan must have told you, TensorFlow from Google, PyTorch from Facebook, <coughs> Keras, Human Learning, Chainer, Cafe, and uh, from Microsoft CNTK. So um, uh, the tutorial he gave you that's also available, he did for the class um, uh, on the, our CRC website. 